Hello everyone. Let's talk about solving this absolute value inequality with two absolute values. Last time I make a video with a similar example with also two absolute values in the inequality and I was using the testing point method to solve that inequality. This time I want to show another method of doing this. So the first thing that we're going to do to solve this inequality is to get this absolute value the x on the right side. So what we are going to do is to add absolute value of the x to both sides of the inequality. So we are going to get absolute value of the x plus 4 on the left side and then we have greater than, then we have 1 then plus absolute value of the x on the right side. So now you are seeing that we have this on the right side here. And then you can see that this is non-negative. This is also non-negative. So that is greater than this one. So the reason for why we are doing this is because we are going to square both sides of the inequality. So we are going to get what? We are going to have square this side and then also square the whole thing on this side okay so we are storing both sides and then on the left side we are going to get what we are going to get x plus 4 with the square okay and and then on the right side we are actually getting the quantity of 1 plus absolute value of the x and then square right so now uh, let's recall this formula over here so we are going to just recall that there is the binomial square formula Okay, and that is equal to the square of the a, and then plus 2 times a, and then times b, and then plus b square. Okay, and then so as you can see that this one is the a, right? So, and then the, uh, the b is absolute value of the x. So you can see that, you can actually see that the one is this one, and then the absolute value of the x is the b. So now what happens is that we are going to square the one, so we get one, and then plus, and then 2ab means that we are going to just multiply them together and then multiply by 2. So we get 2 times 1, and then times absolute value of the x, and then plus, what about this square the absolute value of the x? We just get x squared. Okay, and then... <clears throat> Now, what about this side here? This side, we actually need to expand it. So we are going to get x squared plus same formula over here. So we are going to multiply them together. We get 4x and then double it. We are going to get 8x and then plus 4 squared, which is 16 and then greater than 1 plus 2 times absolute value of the x plus x squared. Okay, so now you can see that we can cancel both sides by uh, of the x squared, right? So they're both positive x squared, so we can subtract x squared from both sides, so we can cancel them. And then so now what happens is that we are going to now have just the rest of the stuff. And then you may say, what do we do with the rest of the stuff? Well, let's take a look. So um, we can move the 1 over, so we are going to get 8x plus 15 because we can subtract 1 from both sides and then greater than now 2 times the absolute value of the x. Okay, we still have an absolute value here, but it's actually uh, better than the original inequality because there were two, but now there is only one absolute value. Okay, so now what we're going to do is that we can square both sides again. Okay, so we do the squaring one more time. Remember that you got to square the whole thing. And so we square both sides and then squaring this expression right here, we are going to get 64x squared plus, and then now 8x times 15, right? So we are going to get 120. 8 times 15 is 120 with the x. And then you got to double it. So we're going to get 240x. And then plus, what about the 15 here? 15 is square is 225. And then greater than, this is what, 4x squared. Okay, so now there is no more absolute value. We really just have a quadratic inequality. And then so moving everything to one side and then so the other side will be zero. So we get to subtract the 4x squared from both sides. We are going to have 60x squared and then plus 240x. And then we have 225 and then greater than zero. So now so far we have this. And then uh, what should we do? Well, we can see that there is, the, uh, there is a common factor for 60 and then 240 and then 225. So we can actually factor that out first. So we can factor out everything by, uh, we can factor out 15 from everything. Okay, so we can factor out 15 from everything. In fact, we can divide the whole inequality by 15. So if we divide everything by 15, Right, we can do this. And 
And then what happens? We are going to get 4x squared, and then plus, and then 240 divided by 16, uh, 15 is going to be 16x, right? And then plus 225 divided by 15, it will be 15. So we have that greater than zero. Okay, so now this is a uh, quadratic here, and then we try to see if we, we can factor it. If not, then we can simply just use the quadratic formula. So let's try it here. So uh, for the 4, we can try uh, 2x, and then the 2x, okay? And then what about the 15? 15, 15, we have we can do uh, 1 and 15 or 5 and 3. So I'm just going to try 5 and 3 first and see what happens. And what we are going to do is to just... Just multiply them following the arrows right here. So we are going to get what? What is this? This is 10x. And then what about this one? This one is 6x, right? 2 times 2x times 3 and then 2x times 5. So we get those. Adding them together, we are going to get the 16x. And because all the signs are positive, so this is our uh, way of factoring this expression. So what do we get if we are factoring this? We are going to get what? We are going to get, just read it across. So we get 2x and then this is positive 5. So even though I didn't put the sign here, we can put 2x plus 5. And then times what is the other one? The other one is going to be 2x and then plus 3. And so we have that greater than zero. So now because this is in the factor form, we can actually start um, testing points, okay? So the end points that we are getting, okay? The end points that we are getting here is that x is equal to, if you set this equal to zero, we get negative five over two, and then set this one equal to zero, we get negative three over two. So now what really happens is that we are going to just make a, straight line over here. Okay, this is our x-axis. And then now we can plot those endpoints on this line. So we get uh, negative five over two. This one is the smallest, so we put on the left side. This is larger, this is negative 1.5, right? So this is on the right side. So we can separate that into three intervals. Okay, one is greater than negative three over two, one is less than negative five over two, and then one is between negative five over two and negative three over two. So now what do we do? We can just start picking some values to plug in. So here we can just pick an easy number. Uh, we can pick zero, of course, right? So if we pick zero and then plug it back in here, actually it will be faster to plug it back into the unfactor form. So putting zero here, zero here, we get just what, 15. So this is greater than zero, so that's okay. So um, so that's fine. This one works. Okay. Now, what about the other one? The other one, let's just pick, uh, what is this? This is negative 1.5. This is negative 2.5. So we can pick an easy, easy number, negative two. So plug the negative two in here. We can plug that in here. We get what? We get negative, um, negative two times two, negative four plus five, right? So we get negative four plus five. I can actually do the calculation here. Negative two times two is negative four plus three. So you can see that this is negative, this is, no, this is positive, this is negative, right? So we are going to get negative um, because that's positive, that's negative. So we are going to get a negative product here because one is positive, the other one is negative, but then it should be greater than zero. So this interval doesn't work. And then what about the next one? The next one, we can just pick, um, just pick a number, um, whatever that you wanna pick, we can pick negative. 1,000 over here, okay? So we pick like the 1,000 over here, we can use this one. This one is going to be a what? This is going to be a big number. It's positive. And then, so it's going to be, okay, so this is positive. This is, well, this is only 16 times like the 1,000. So we get like the uh, 16,000. So it's still going to be positive. Now, the problem is that because we're doing the squaring, so we got to be more careful. So just because we get those two intervals right here does not mean that they will, it's guaranteed that they will work. So we still got to do a little bit more checking, not just plugging back in here, but we also need to go back to the original inequality and just check to make sure that it works. Okay. And in fact, in this case, we can, um, if we plug the zero in, we plug the zero in, we are going to get four and then minus the zero still greater than one. So this will still work. Okay. So this one still work. And then what about the one? Well, this one, we already know that it doesn't work, right? So now this one, um, we need to check. So if we put in negative 1000 in here, so what do we get here? Negative 1000 plus four, what do we get? We are going to get 
negative 996. Okay. Okay. And then minus, minus negative 1000. And then do you see what's going on here? We get 996 minus 1000 because the because we're taking the absolute value. So this is still negative. So this one doesn't work anymore, right? So that, that doesn't work anymore. So the only thing that really works is actually just this one. So we are going to just shape this right here. Okay. So now, uh, how do we write down the solution set? We can actually just write down the solution set by what do we get here? We can write it in the interval notation. And then um, now the question is, what about the endpoint, the negative three over two? We can still also just check the endpoint and plug it back in here. And then what happens? If we plug the negative three over two in here, we are going to get what? Four minus 1.5 is 2.5, right? So we can check that. So here, let's check the endpoint. So let me copy down the inequality. So this is, x plus four, and then minus absolute value the x, and then it's greater than one, right? So we plug the endpoint back in here, so negative three over two. So negative three over two, and then plus four, then minus negative three over two. And then we wanna check whether that's actually greater than one, so four minus 1.5. All right, so we are going to get 2.5. Then minus, what about this one here? What about this one? This one is actually just 1.5, right? With the negative sign. But then you know that the negative sign doesn't matter. So we get 2.5 minus 1.5. It's going to be what? It's going to be greater than one. So um, this is actually just one, right? Is it one greater than one? That's not true, right? So we actually cannot include this point. So we are going to put an open circle over here. So that means we are going to get what? The solution is going from negative three over two to infinity. And so that's our final answer. Okay, so that's it for this problem. If you like this video, please give me a like and then also subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.